Hey y'all, welcome back to Brambleberry. If you run an off-grid solar setup and you use gas-powered generators to charge your batteries, you might be wasting your gas. If you wanna know what I'm talking about, then stick around. So there's probably some of you out there that uh, if you watch this video, you're gonna go, well, duh. How did you not know that? Well, when you're uh, learning, sometimes you don't know things. So uh, <laughs> those of you who are in that camp, you can just turn the video off and you don't have to keep watching. But uh, for those of you who are learning and want to know about this, uh, I've got some information that I think might be helpful to you. But before I get to that, I wanna show you what my setup is so that you have a little bit a uh, better idea of what I'm talking about. So I have, I have a grow watt inverter. I'm running a 24 volt system. These are EG4 server rack batteries, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And I have a battery charger. It's a 24 volt charger. And I've got it all tied into my AC side, all that stuff. I am off grid. That's where my solar panels come in. The arrays are all out that way. And I have three different generators that I run. And this is what I'm gonna to talk to you about. I've got a Predator 2000 and a Predator 3000 and then a Predator 5000, which is a dual fuel. So it'll run propane or unleaded. If you run an off-grid solar system, you probably have realized that the chances of you building a system that's going to sustain you indefinitely are pretty low. At some point, you're probably going to have to run a generator to charge your batteries up. And that's just because it's not always sunny. So if you have a string of cloudy days, you are, you're out of luck. You know? You've got to run the generators. You've got to burn some fuel. When we first got this system, I had the uh, 3000 watt, I guess it's the 3500 watt inverter because it's the peak watts is what it's called, but running watts is 3000. I had that and we used that and then it quit on me. And so I went out and I bought the 5000 watt and no, actually it wasn't that. I bought the little one just to get by. Then I got the 3000 watt um, fixed. And so I was running those two. And then I decided, you know, I want something a little bit more redundancy um, because we're living off grid. So I got the 5000 watt because it was on sale. And that way, um, if I'm out of unleaded, I can run propane uh, and so on. The propane... Uh, it was a little more expensive to run and you don't get quite as much power out of it, but it's a backup basically in case I need it. Anyway, the point that I'm getting to with this video is that if you're running a similar setup to this, you should size your generator to what your usage is at the time. In my particular setup, I can charge my batteries with this external battery charger or I can use the grow watt inverter to charge. Basically you plug it in like you would if you were hooking it up to grid power, but you hook it to your generator. Uh, and then it powers your loads and it charges your battery concurrently. Oh, and I also have this uh, extra auxiliary array that's on its own charge controller. There's other videos about that if you wanna see. That doesn't really play much into obviously it. the solar panels will charge my batteries but if that's out of the equation i can use the battery charger i can use the grow watt or i can use both of them together if i uh, really want to give it some extra power there the reason i say you want to match your generator is because to the usage that you're having is because if you're if like let's say let's say i don't have a lot of loads going on and I just wanna top off my batteries. You know, I'm probably gonna use just my little battery charger. I'm not gonna plug in my inverter. Um, just use my little battery charger. If I plug that in 
to my 5,000 watt inverter, then it's running at a very low percentage of its capable output. So it's idling, uh, it's using more gas than it needs to. Uh, so I'm not getting as much bang for my buck out of the fuel that I'm putting into it. It guzzles a lot more gas than the other two smaller generators do. So in that particular instance, that is what I would want to use because it's going to put this generator up into a higher percentage of its capable output. So I'm using the fuel more efficiently than I am with the big one, certainly, and even with this one. Now I realize uh, the chances of you having more than one generator uh, may not be all that high. Uh, if you are living off grid, I would suggest you get more than one generator because you never know when one's gonna break down. Uh, so <clears throat> I'd say at least two. I have these three. I also have another uh, non-inverter generator that I hardly ever use, but it's here, you know, if I need it for something. But that's kind of besides the point. If I didn't have the 2000 watt, I could use the uh, 3500 in that capacity just to charge my batteries to top them off. Now, let's say that I'm in a situation where I need some more power. Like I, I went all night, you know, I had a cloudy day the day before, maybe two days before. I wake up in the morning, my batteries are all flashing. Um, I don't have a real high load at the moment as far as my usage, but I really need to get those batteries charged up quickly. Uh, then I would use the 3500 watt and I would plug in the grow watt and the battery charger concurrently. So it's gonna give it a quicker charge because there's gonna be more amps pushed into the batteries. It put that generator higher up into uh, its usable wattage and make it run more efficiently so it's not just idling wasting gas but then there's the third scenario the third scenario is that i need to charge my batteries they may be low i may want to top them off i don't know what it could be either case but the other uh variable is that i have high loads running so maybe I'm running my air conditioner or our propane dryer. It's not like a constant draw, but whenever it draws, it's a pretty, uh, a pretty big wattage that it draws because of the heating element on it. Maybe I'm, or I'm, you know, if I'm running the microwave, you know, that's a pretty big pull too. Uh, you just kind of, it depends on your system on the AC side of your system. But if I've got a lot of those high draw appliances and stuff going, then that's when I'm gonna run the 5,000 watt and I'm gonna plug in the uh, grow watt so that it's running my loads and the extra power is going into the batteries. And uh, I may plug in my battery charger depending on the loads. If I have a really high loads, I don't wanna do that. I just want to put the excess in uh, and run my loads with the 5,000 watt because if I put in, I've had this happen before, I've been trying to charge using the battery charger and the grow watt concurrently, and I have two high loads on my AC side, and it'll shut the whole system down because it overdraws on the grow watt. And that's the thing about the grow watt uh, that you really uh, have to be aware of if you have one of those, is that if you're using the inverter to charge your batteries, you're using part of that inverter wattage. So this is a 3000 watt inverter. If I'm, you know, drawing 2500 watts and then all of a sudden I, I throw, uh, you know, a battery charger on that draws another thousand. Well, guess what? I just uh, put my grow watt over the edge and it's probably gonna shut down if that's sustained. Now it might do like for a peak you know, output, it might put out a little bit more, but it's not gonna sustain that. So uh, you don't wanna push it too hard in that way. So I know this video has been a lot of talking uh, and sorry about that, but I think it's good information. I hope it's good information. Uh, keep in mind, uh, I am certainly not an expert in these matters as usual. I'm just telling you my experience using this equipment and what I've uh, discovered. But if you want to not waste your gas, 
and you're just topping off your batteries, use the smallest generator that can power your battery charger. Don't use your great big one because you're gonna just be wasting your gas. So uh, if you got any questions, put them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them, you know. Um, as I said, I'm not an expert, but I do have some experience with it. So I'm, I'm willing to, to share those things. Um, or if you see something I'm missing and you want to share that, I'm happy to hear that too, because I'm always willing to learn. But uh, whatever the case may be, if you watch this video this long, then I thank you for watching. I hope you have a very blessed day.